Okay, everyone, it is Thursday, May 7th. Um, I was told by council member Chris Rogers today that it is day 51 of shelter in place. I have not counted myself, um, but I take his word for that. It certainly seems like a lot longer, I think, for a lot of us. Um, I wanna give you the quick rundown of the number of cases that we have currently in Sonoma County. So we currently have 292 total cases, 100, 153 female cases, and 139 male cases. In the age range of zero to 17, we've had 39 confirmed cases. In the age range of 18 to 49, we've had 147 confirmed cases. In the age range of 50 two confirmed cases. We're still seeing the cases spread around the county um, and with the concentration again in the central part of Sonoma County, which is also the most densely populated. So North County has seen 23 cases, South County has seen 41, East County has seen 21, West County has seen 17, and Central County has seen 190. Of the cases, 91% have not required hospitalization and 9% have required hospitalization. We have performed 8,605 tests, which is really good news. We are really ramping up our testing capacity here in Sonoma County. I wanna give you a few really big updates. Um, there's some exciting news tonight that I know that it's been a very challenging um, month for everyone already, even though we're, it feels like we're hardly into May, um, but we do have a little bit of hope. Number one, the state did um, provide a framework for counties to move forward with opening up curbside pickup for our local retail establishments tomorrow. We've had our attorneys working around the clock, and so I can confirm to you that as of tomorrow, it will be legal here in Sonoma County for our local mom and pop shops to open for curbside pickup. So this could be your bookstore, your toy store, candles, yarn, clothing, shoes, whatever it is, um, but it is currently for curbside pickup only or for um, you know shipping or delivery, of course, as well. I also have another announcement, which is with respect to recreational fishing. Um, this is something that I have been working pretty hard on because I've heard from a lot of West County residents that that's an important food source for them, being able to go out into the ocean where it's obviously very easy to attain social distancing and to procure their food from the sea. And so I can announce that tomorrow, Westside Boat Launch will be open for business. Um, Spud Point and Mason's Marinas will as well. And so people can come in and they can trailer their boat and they can go out and obtain their own food. Um, and I have confirmed that there's no limitation on the type of boat, so the West Side um, kayak launch will be available as well if anyone wants to go kayak fishing. Um, now, and I also a little bit of sort of planting some seeds of hope for next week, um, you can expect a change in the parks order likely to come next week that will likely, likely be discussed at the Board of Supervisors meeting on Tuesday. I want to acknowledge the tremendous equity issues that we have had with the current parks order. While it provided a little bit of a relief valve for some families who are fortunate enough to live within walking or biking distance of a park, unfortunately a lot of people don't and so it didn't help them. So we're likely to see um, some kind of a phased opening, right, which starts to allow people to actually drive to a regional park um, to have access for that. So stay tuned, it's not official yet, we don't have you know anything formal to announce, but you can expect more information to come next week. Um, finally, the big news of the day really came from the state where the governor now has a set of criteria that if counties meet that, right, they can move into sort of advanced phase two, right? The state has it broken down into, you know, phase one, which is where we currently are. Then the sort of very beginning of phase two is what's happening tomorrow with retail establishments being allowed to open for curbside pickup. And then we have sort of a bigger phase two, right, which will start to get to more businesses, to office space, um, to manufacturing, to those kinds of things. However, it's important to recognize that the county is not currently meeting the state's criteria. And we're actually providing feedback to the state because some of this criteria feels a little bit arbitrary. And actually, in some instances, we kind of get penalized for having a very aggressive surveillance testing program in Sonoma County. So I'm actually gonna read through the different criteria that we have to meet before the state will actually allow us to move forward with opening more businesses. So, you know, tomorrow we can do the curbside pickup no matter what, but if we wanna go further than that, it's actually gonna require us to meet a number of criteria. Here's the one that's most challenging. We have to have no more than one COVID-19 positive case per 10,000 people over a two week time span. So that means about 50 people for us. 
and we are currently closer to 80 over the past two weeks. But the reason that we're closer to 80 is because we're actually aggressively testing people. I mean, we have one of the top testing programs in the state right now, and that's not just me bragging. We are actually testing every single contact of every confirmed COVID-19 patient that we have, whether or not they have symptoms. So we're actually catching a lot of people that are totally asymptomatic and that probably wouldn't have gotten a test had we not been so you know, aggressive in our surveillance testing. And so that's interesting because then the positive tests actually sort of count against you in the state's metric, um, whereas it's actually a really good thing that we're proactive out there and finding these tests, so uh, these positive cases. So we are providing feedback to the governor's office regarding this. And hopefully there might be an opportunity for some kind of variance for counties who are really aggressive on their testing schedule. Um, the second criteria from the state is no COVID-19 death in the past 14 days. Unfortunately, we did have um, the third fatality in Sonoma County in the past 14 days. And so we don't meet that metric. But at the same time, we've only had three fatalities total. And so we think that that metric is probably geared towards the larger counties who are experiencing sort of more regular fatalities um, as opposed to, you know, we have fortunately been lucky and it's very, very sad that we have lost three people, but keeping it to three people um, is a very different situation than some what some other counties are facing. So we don't currently meet that metric. Um, ability to support employees when sick or exposed, we have that. We set up our alternative care site. We have a place where we can quarantine people, which is great. Availability of disinfectant supplies and protective gear, we've done that, right? So we are um, really, really, we're aggressive in terms of sourcing all of that stuff. So we meet that criteria and we can check that box. Next criteria from the state, minimum daily testing of 1.5 per 1,000 residents. We can check that box as well. We have really stepped up our testing and so we have about 800 um, tests per day capacity right now. And anyone can go ahead and get that test. Um, I'm sure that Leo can post the link and the phone number um, if you're not able to check it and I didn't jot it down on my notepad today. Um, here's one that we don't know exactly what it means. One of the criteria for reopening businesses is the ability to temporarily house at least 15% of the county residents experiencing homelessness. Now, we're not sure if these are 15% of those who are most at high risk from COVID-19 population um, complications, or if our current shelter capacity can count towards that 15%. So we're trying to get a little bit more information about what exactly is required with respect to providing our unsheltered um, residents with shelter. Um, other criteria, and there are 11, so I apologize that this is going for so long, but the state wants you to do 11 things before you can actually move forward with reopening businesses. Next one is that the county or regional capacity has an um, ability to accommodate a minimum surge of 35% in new COVID patients. We have that hands down. We have created fantastic surge capacity within our healthcare system, and it's actually um, not currently very highly utilized. Next one is hospital facilities must have a robust plan to protect hospital workforce. We have worked very closely. Um, I have heard some feedback from some frontline workers that they still want increased access to PPE. We are securing and sourcing PPE through the county and providing that to our healthcare providers. So if anyone hears complaints from our nurses or clinicians, please pass them on to me so that we can look into that. But we do believe that there is a, a plan to protect the hospital workforce. Second to last one. Skilled nursing facilities must have more than a 14 day supply of PPE on hand for staff with ongoing procurement from non-state supply chains. We checked that box. We've been very aggressively sourcing um, that PPE and providing it to our skilled nursing facilities as well. Um, the last criteria is county metrics that serve as triggers for either slowing the pace through state to stage two or tightening the modifications. And so that's something that we can work to develop, right? What happens if we start seeing an increase in cases? How will we respond to that? Ultimately, my understanding, and again, this is a developing on an hour by hour basis. There was just a call earlier this evening with the governor's office with participation by the California State Association of Counties and our county council, Bruce Goldstein is actually the council for all of um, this California State Association of Counties executive committee. So he was on there as well. And so we're currently trying to get more information and also to advocate for metrics that are really data-based and make sense here in Sonoma County. Um, but our understanding is that essentially we would be coming up with a plan and that plan would include, you know, what would be those triggers for slowing the pace for reopening or potentially battening back down the hatches if we did see a surge in cases. And that plan would need to be first approved by the public health officer and then by the County Board of Supervisors and then sent on to the state for information. So, and it looks like um, Leo sent, I think, out the information about the self-testing so with that, I am going to turn it over to the um, questions and I will apologize in advance. My husband is currently trying to get the um, one-year-old um, 
uh, to bed. So I do not have um, I do not have an assistant today. All right, question from um, Mindy. We need antibody testing in order to really know the extent of the spread. I completely agree, and we are actively working on sourcing the antibody tests. Unfortunately, I still don't have a delivery date, but I do know that we are on the list and we are actively trying to get a hold of those. Um, question from Gina. I asked about tattoo shops last time, and my question was misunderstood. I want to know what phase they will be opening in with consideration given on the fact that they already follow strict health protocols. Thank you. That's a great question. I'm sorry I misunderstood it last time. My understanding is that unfortunately, um, personal care was in one of the later phases. So that would include, um, I believe, tattoo shops as well as salons, um, you know, whether it's a hair salon or a nail salon, massage, um, the spas, those kinds of functions. I believe that they were tentatively slated for, um, for phase three, but I also know that there are conversations happening about exactly what falls into what phase. So I don't think that it's completely solidified yet. And I will let you know as, as soon as I hear more information from the state. Um, some of this stuff is literally changing hour by hour based on real-time feedback. And I do want to acknowledge that a lot of our um, you know, folks who are running small businesses, and in particular tattoo parlors, you already have certifications through our environmental health um, you know, department, which mandates sort of stringent protocols. And so I think that's a, something certainly to raise to the state level. All right. Um, question, when can we see the opening of museums and art galleries? They are low risk and can more easily manage social distancing practices. Plus they are needed as a place to go for inspiration. That's a fantastic question. I actually don't know um, what category museums and art galleries fall into. I do want to note that I know it's not the same because trust me, I am on virtual online meetings all day. And by the end of the day, I have a headache from, you know, staring at that little screen all day long. Um, but we did actually fund Sebastopol Center for the Arts in order to create a virtual gallery so that it would replace basically Sonoma County Art Trails. So knowing that, you know, that it was sort of a challenge, um, not kind of going to be one of the places where we're going to have lots of people cramming into galleries to come and purchase art over a couple of weekends. We actually are working to stand up some capacity that they can actually sell and have art viewed and um, and then be sold online. So um, great question about museums and art galleries and I will definitely look into that and follow up. All right, question. Can you clarify the rules for some summer childcare and camps? Some seem to think they will be able to provide childcare to children of essential workers. Others seem to think they can't operate at all. Is a group of children stable if it's the same group of kids for the week or how is that determined? This is a great, great question. And I actually convened a meeting a couple days ago with a lot of leaders in childcare in Sonoma County specifically to tackle this. As we start to move forward with reopening the economy, we really have to talk about childcare because people can't go back to work if they are also trying to not only sort of homeschool, but also just take care of their children all day. So right now, the guidelines are for essential workers only. And I believe that in Sonoma County, the maximum number of children in a stable group is 12. However, the state actually has more stringent regulations right now. So through their um, licensing division in their human services department at the state, and they actually have a maximum group size of 10. Um, there's also some sort of slight disagreements between different counties regarding, you know, masking requirements for children um, at, at childcare facilities. And right now the recommendation is that you attempt to mask children, um, any child that is sort of two or over, but as any mother would know, there is no way that you would keep a mask on a two-year-old all day long. Um, and there was concern from the childcare providers that I spoke with that that could also incur trauma for the children. So um, the childcare is something that I really wanna work on and there is not really a clear path forward for being able to open up um, kind of certainly not the standard kinds of summer camps, but if we could find some way of keeping again, sort of similar groups of children along that that might be something that's more feasible ultimately this is completely the call of dr mace but i wanted to make sure that her decision making process is being informed by some of our leaders so i had angie dillenshore from first five melanie dodson from four c's um lara who is their uh, public policy person and others anyway sorry i'm a bit of a child care nerd being a mom of three and so i will definitely um, keep you updated on the child care conversation all right um, Leo was sharing the information. So if you scroll up, you can see um, the testing is available for 260 people per day at the locations in Santa Rosa and Petaluma. And you can call 1-888-634-1123 if you don't have access to the internet. And otherwise it's lhi.care backslash COVID testing. Um, so anyone can, um, can uh, call that. And I know that there was a lot of initial interest in this program. And so it might be full for a couple days, but keep checking back. And I believe that we actually just got 
um, we're able to increase the capacity of those testing sites. So I think it's actually even more than um, 260. I think I just learned that earlier this evening from Dr. Mays. I have a comment that says, open the ocean for recreational activity for heaven's sake. No sitting or standing on the beach, social distancing rules still apply. Not that hard, just like an O-C-S-D-H-I-N-O-S-F. Either that or we'll all just get even cozier with one another on park trails. Open the oceans, please. I completely understand the desire to have the coast open. And I was on a call earlier this week with all of our partners um, in terms, terms of coastal enforcement. So it was the sheriff's office, it was the DA, it was um, CHP, it was regional parks, it was state parks. Um, so everyone was at the table and we were talking about what kind of measures could be put into place to reopen the coast safely. And it's challenging because we have a lot of different properties that are owned by different jurisdictions. So we've got regional parks, which could actually, we could stand up a reservation system to try to control the flow of the crowd. But state parks doesn't have that reservation system capacity, so they can't. So we're trying to find one policy that will work for everyone. And that's a little bit challenging. Ultimately, we wanna make sure that the coastal infrastructure is not overwhelmed. And we also need to have a conversation with our local fire districts before we go forward with opening up the coast because those first responders are the ones who will literally lay their lives on the line for tourists who come and engage in risky behaviors at the coast. And we really wanna make sure that our first responders are safe. Um, and also that we're not causing you know, car accidents and things like that if people crowd the pullouts and there's suddenly traffic stopped on a you know, sort of steep turn on Highway 1. So there are certainly safety concerns that we are working through. Um, I will note that in Orange County and in San Diego, they have way more staff than we do. So they have tons of police, tons of lifeguards, and they are able to really blanket the coast with personnel to ensure that people are moving along and to ensure that they're socially distancing. Um, we are looking at the model that Santa Cruz has, um, has implemented, and it's kind of weird, and I actually find it a little bit difficult to justify um, as a policy, but apparently it's working in Santa Cruz. They actually have the beaches open in the morning and the evening, but closed in the middle of the day. I don't understand, quite frankly, because it's hard for me to justify to a constituent that, hey, it's safe to be on the beach at 10.30 a.m., but then you have to leave, and it's not safe to be on the beach at 11.30. But the goal is really to moderate crowds and to try to make sure that it's being very clear that it's not a passive activity. Like you don't just go to the beach and camp out all day with your pop-up tent and you know your sand toys and your, your beach blanket, right? It's about walking through, enjoying the coast, and then letting an opportunity for someone else to um, enjoy the coast as well. So all of these kinds of policies are all under consideration and we're gonna do the best that we can. And we're gonna also work with local stakeholders to make sure that those policies can be implemented. One thing that I learned on um, from the sheriff's office and from the DA is that it's actually unconstitutional um, to go and check someone's ID. And so, you know, if we were to, for instance, have a locals only uh, program at the beach, that actually becomes very difficult to enforce. I do believe that our park rangers would be allowed to see if you were a local as you went into um, the, um, you know, we could have some kind of like locals parks pass and that might be another solution as well. Anyways, if you have any brilliant ideas on how to open the coast up in a way that is safe for the public health, and does not open the floodgates, but allows all of us locals to go out there and stretch our legs on the beach, please let me know. All right, um, any news on dog grooming from Mary? Um, this, has, this is just one of those things that I find ridiculous. So right now, if you want your dog to get groomed, even if your dog is super furry and it's really hot and you're worried about your dog, you know, getting sort of heat stroke or getting ticks or getting burrs, you have to get a note from your vet in order to then present that note to the dog groomer to get your dog groomed. This is kind of one of those examples of, it just doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, you know, either this is an activity, and I also think that we have common sense, right? If you know, you don't, this is not the time to go and make sure that your dog is beautiful every single day, but if your dog needs to be groomed, your dog needs to be groomed um, for its own health. So I still continue to, um, to advocate and ask about that, but it is the opinions of our attorneys that the state has classified that as a non-essential business. And so therefore um, it is not currently permitted in our current shelter in place order. But here's the thing, attorneys often disagree and some other counties have interpreted it differently. So they actually are allowing dog grooming. So I'm encouraging our attorneys to talk to those attorneys to see how they interpreted it slightly differently to see if there's any room just to move forward for the health of animals. Um, question from Erica, can you talk about mental health and the shelter in place? Um, this is a really, really big topic. I hosted um, Supervisor James Gore, a parenting in place Zoom meeting video that we're gonna be sharing clips of at some point um, in the weeks to come. And we just had a bunch of parents from all around the county come and talk about their experiences of sheltering in place. And what struck me was how 
just the, the mental health challenges for everybody who is going through this and how, you know, we all sort of became very vulnerable in this moment and we're sharing, you know, the challenges and the struggles and, you know, how tough it is to sort of be tough in front of your children, you know, and sort of act like everything is okay when sometimes it feels like the world is falling apart. And so um, I just want to acknowledge that this is very much top of mind. Um, and so we're going to be having some really robust conversations at the county about ensuring that we have adequate mental health care provision. Um, and in the meantime, we do have the warm line. I used to have that memorized, but I no longer have the phone number memorized. Maybe um, Leo can post it for us in the comments. Um, but I, I just want to acknowledge that a lot of people are really struggling. There are things that you can do. Text someone, give someone a call. If you, you know, we have um, an elderly neighbor who lives by herself and we have, you know, some asparagus from the farm. And so we just door drop some asparagus. And sometimes just doing something like that to show people that they're not alone, more than just your average 8 p.m. howl, right, in the neighborhood, can really make a big difference in just checking in. So, um, I, you know, the, the sort of phrase, which I think is really accurate, is that social distancing does not mean emotional distancing. So check in with everyone, get help if you need it. And if you are ever in a point where you really are potentially suicidal or thinking about doing something that would harm yourself, it's not just, you know, the sort of warm line, you can call 911 and be connected into our um, crisis stabilization unit. We do have emergency resources that are available, but take care of yourself, take care of others. Um, that's how we're really gonna get through this. And, and you know, it's, a, it's challenging. I've talked to a lot of medical providers who are starting to talk more and more about the public health impacts of shelter in place, right? We have the public health impacts of COVID-19, but then there are the public health impacts of an economic recession where you aren't allowed to, you know, hug your friends and, and family members who live outside of your household. And so that is a, a very substantial um, public health impact as well in terms of, you know, the potential for deaths and despair, the potential impacts on our mental health. So please take care of yourselves and, um, and call that mental um, health warm line if you need to talk to anybody at any time. Question, um, my partner works at Oakmont where one of his coworkers tested positive for COVID. Why aren't they testing people there? Um, so what we do is whenever we have a positive a confirmed case, we do go through the contact investigation process and we are trying to actually test all contacts. So um, there should be people who are being tested if they came into contact with that coworker. Um, and you know, if there's someone who's just in the community and is concerned, they can absolutely call that phone number or visit that website that we posted earlier um, and request their own test at the one of two sites, one in Santa Rosa and one in Petaluma. Okay, um, Deb says that she's scheduled for a COVID-19 test on Monday. Once the antibody tests become available, will, I, will you be able to take that as well? Hopefully, we do wanna make the antibody tests widely available. We don't have that right now though. Um, and there are sort of two different types of tests. So it's not like, you know, we can save your sample and then use it for a future antibody test. But hopefully that eventually we will have the capacity to test anyone who wants to with the antibody testing. Um, question, when antibody testing is made available and will it be used as a factor for reopening or upstaffing businesses? You know, this is something that has been considered in other countries. I haven't heard of it being introduced as a serious concept in California yet. I think just because we don't have widely accessible antibody tests at this point in time, but it's certainly something to keep tracking. And I'll make sure that we are um, still, you know, trying to I'll circle back and see where we are on that list. Hopefully we get those antibody tests soon. All right, from Melissa. Are shopping mall retail stores able to open for um, shipment from store operations or only standalone retailers open for fulfillment at this time? Um, that is a great question. And I don't have, I'm, I'm not 100% confident in my answer, but I do believe from watching the governor's briefings um, that he said that shopping malls would be open reopening at a later date because that was considered a higher risk type of activity. Um, so that is my understanding, but don't quote me on that. I can look up um, that and sort of confirm if that is accurate or not. My understanding is more at sort of, you know, main street businesses. So if you're kind of downtown, small towns, whereas the concern about a shopping mall, of course, is that you have an enclosed space, you have, um, you know, an HVAC system, a lot of people kind of coming and going and maybe a little more challenging with um, respect to social distancing. But I, I would sort of think that they would be able to still allow um, for shipment, which I think is actually what you were asking. I apologize, sort of clarity in the question. So. Um, that is something that I can ask right now. Let me just quickly look at the um, at the uh, language. It says it says the ability of retail businesses such as bookstores, jewelry stores, toy stores, clothing stores, shoe stores, home and furnishing stores, sporting goods stores, antique stores, music stores to conduct retail sales by curbside pickup, delivery, or shipping. So I think that would actually mean that um, mall businesses 
could do that, right? So we're not opening the mall, like you can't go into the mall, but you could ship or you could provide a curbside delivery. There is no um, kind of anti-mall element to this order. I think that the mall conversation with the governor was more related to when we actually allow in-store foot traffic. So I'm glad that I, I looked that back. Um, question from Candace, Quest Lab is doing an antibody test. Is that one not accurate? I understand it is free with an MD doctor's prescription and $100 without a prescription. I have heard of a few people getting the Quest test. So, you know, if you have a primary care provider who is willing to request that test for you and you can get it, go for it. We're just trying to make sure that we have um, public health lab capacity as well. Um, question from Helen or comment. I am concerned about the number of people I saw on narrow park trails and sidewalks this weekend. Well, I hope that they were um, wearing facial coverings, which can potentially reduce the transmission um, of the disease out. And, um, and if you have any specific parks that you're concerned about, please let us know. I know that regional parks actually stood up some signage, um, you know, kind of trying to really message out that we need to be social distancing, that we can't overcrowd the parks. I also think that to be honest, we just have a lot of pent up demand right now. People have not been able to get outside. And so I'm guessing that we'll kind of see a surge in, in park use before things kind of level out. And that's one of the reasons that it's been challenging to think about reopening the coast as well, um, because we know that everybody has wanted to get out to the coast for um, quite some time. And thank you very much to um, whoever it was on my staff who po posted the phone number. So it's 565-2652 um, for free and private support if someone is experiencing emotional stress or anxiety. For whatever reason, my um, my feed is now frozen. So oh, there we go. Um, let's see if I can find the next one. Um, as we loosen restrictions, is there any model available for us to know what a resurgence looks like and how quickly it would become apparent? So I would encourage you to go to socoemergency.org. From there, scroll down the page until you see the COVID-19 dashboard and click on that link. You can actually track the number of active cases by day. And so you can literally see how once we implemented the shelter in place order, the curve flattened. That's where I go every night before I have one of these briefings. I check on it on a daily basis. And that is the best way to know um, in real time what's happening with respect to um, infections. And so, you know, if we do see a surge, you'll start to see that flattened curve, right? Start to become um, more exponential in its increase. Um, so we don't have, you know, an actual model that is sort of modeling things in real time, but we do have that data that is literally updated on a day by day basis. All right. Um, Dee Dee says, my family can't wait to go kayaking and to the beach and camping. I'm so proud that we flattened the curve, but anxious for some times outdoors, although my yard is looking amazing. I completely agree. And I'm really hopeful um, that next week we will have some positive information about what other parks you can access. Um, and yeah, that will hopefully, hopefully open up more recreational opportunities for all of our residents. Question, is there a possibility for youth sports sometime this year? I honestly do not know um, the answer to that question. You know, if, especially if you're talking about youth sports that would have, you know, interactions with other teams, that's likely to be considered a higher risk activity. If you're talking about something that is a stable group of children, like one team, you know, that's essentially a childcare provision sort of a scenario. And so, you know, that might be something that um, might come earlier than competitive sports, which are interacting with different groups of children. Um, but again, we'd need to check in with Dr. Mace and find out um, sort of what, you know, what the current best practices are throughout the state. All right. Um, let's see, this is a comment that says, unfortunately, the beaches that are open in California um, aren't just using it for walking and jogging, but having picnics and play. People need to follow orders and the longer they don't, the longer the beaches will stay closed. I hope that they open for walking and mental health, but so many don't follow the rules and we don't have enough park beach staff to monitor all these people. Um, I agree that that is sad and it is a challenge. And so my hope is that, you know, we really try to get the word out. Signage, social media campaigns, you know, go on the radio. I want us, and I really believe that here in Sonoma County, we can do this right, right? We can open up, we can follow the rules, and, and unfortunately, this is one of those cases where if we don't follow the rules, we are likely to lose the privilege because it will create a public health concern and we will start to see those cases increase. Um, but we are definitely working towards ways in which we can facilitate people being able to do some of those um, activities, especially those outdoor activities. All right, I am scrolling and seeing if there is any other, um, let's see. Um, yes, so question from Debbie, which I didn't answer before, is it true grooming is available only per vet recommendation? That is um, unfortunately still true, even though other counties have interpreted the pet grooming issue differently. And so I am trying to get 
a different legal opinion that could maybe be shared with our attorneys to see if, if um, there is potentially any movement for that. Um, any update on when hotels may open? What should we do about weddings? This is a really challenging issue because so much of our West County economy relies on tourism. Um, hotels are, are definitely right now not in that, that phase two that we're looking at from the governor. We haven't really gotten a lot of information about if there might be, you know, different size establishments that are allowed or if, you know, a hotel that has, say, 300 rooms and they're all internal facing, right? They all share the same hallway and the same elevator. That's very different from, say, you know, a hotel that is primarily comprised of little individual casitas that are sort of out, you know, in, in, in the outdoors. And so those are the kinds of questions where we're awaiting additional guidance from the state. With respect to weddings, um, it has been announced by Dr. Mace that for the duration of the summer, so, you know, through Labor Day, um, that there will not be big events and actually likely not to have events outside of, um, you know, an individual household. So big events are off the table for this summer. Um, I, I don't know at which point they will be reopened. That will largely depend on data that we just don't have yet and on in information and requirements from the state that we don't yet have either. So, all right, question from Deb. Can't rangers just make contact with car occupants at the coast and determine whether they are Sonoma County residents? If not local, a warning of if ticket and they're on their way, leaving us able to sit in our cars and have a picnic gazing at our ocean. Um, so the problem that I have been told is that unless someone is actually, you know, coming into a park, that might be a different situation, but it's actually unconstitutional um, to ask someone for their identification. And I, I assume that this relates to, um, you know, court case law and um, in particular that, you know, things have been done with respect to racial profiling in the past. And so trying to um, establish that it's not fair to target certain people. Um, that is what I was told by the sheriff's office. So we cannot actually sort of ask someone for their ID to see whether or not they're a local if they're just kind of parked alongside the road. So um, so again, still working. I saw someone saying that we're making a lot of excuses not to open the coast. No, we are actually working very hard to develop a solution that will work not just for regional parks, because I think we could actually develop a solution that would work for regional parks, but we also have state parks and we have our sheriff's deputies and we have CHP, right? We have a bunch of different stakeholders and we're trying to get everybody on the same page to reopen safely. Because the problem is if we reopen unsafely, then we're gonna have to shut down the coast again and no one wants to do that. So we really wanna find a safe way forward. And I promise that I am working hard um, with our public health officer and with uh, Regional Parks Director, Bert Whitaker on that one. All right. Um, okay, all right. If there, I'm trying to scroll and see if there's any viewer one last questions. Um, let's see. I see some comments about mental health and um, really completely agree. Um, yeah, so again, the mental health warm line, 565-2652. And um, let's see, any last questions? I got another one on youth sports, which I already covered. Um, and I, I'm not seeing anything else. So um, thank you all very much for joining me here tonight. I know that this is a really challenging time for everyone. And I know that there's just increased sort of stress and anxiety in the community. Um, you know, talking to some of these other parents around the county last night, hearing how many people are experiencing food insecurity, how many people are afraid that they won't be able to pay their rent, how many small business owners are saying, damn it, give me a timeline, because if I don't have a timeline, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to reopen again ever. Um, so we are working very hard to try to line up resources, food resources, um, you know, emergency rental assistance. I got an email today that um, from Soledad, who uh, is the executive director at River to Coast Children's Services, saying that, hey, 20 families were helped out by the small grant that we gave them last week. So bit by bit, we're going to try to get through this together. And if there are any questions that I didn't get to answer or any specific needs that you have that you feel are not currently being met, I mean, I know that there are many, right? But if we will try to refer you to a program that might be able to help. And if that does not exist, let's talk about brainstorming. What can we do to help get our community through this? How can we get through this together? Thank you so much for joining us. Take care. My email is lynda.hopkins at sonoma-county.org. Feel free to email me anytime. And I look forward to seeing you all again on, actually I'm taking Sunday off, Sunday's Mother's Day. So I'm taking that off and I will see you again next Thursday. Take care.